2 Samuel chapter 4. When Saul's son Ishbal heard that Abner had died at Hebron, his courage failed and all Israel was dismayed. Saul's son had two captains of raiding bands. The name of one was Bana, and the name of the other was Rechab. They were sons of Rimen, a Benjamite from Beeroth, for Beeroth is considered to belong to Benjamin. Now the people of Beeroth had fled to Gitaim and are there as resident aliens to this day. Saul's son Jonathan had a son who was crippled in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and fled, and in her haste to flee, it happened that he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. Now the sons of Rimen, the Berothite, Rechab and Bana, set out, and about the heat of the day they came to the house of Ishbal, while he was taking his noonday rest. They came inside the house as though to take wheat, and they struck him in the stomach. Then Rechab and his brother Bana escaped. Now they had come into the house while he was lying on his couch in his bedchamber. They attacked him, killed him, and beheaded him. Then they took his head and travelled by way of the Arabah all night long. They brought the head of Ishbal to David at Hebron and said to the king, Here is the head of Ishbal, son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life. The Lord has avenged my lord, the king, this day on Saul and on his offspring. David answered Rechab and his brother Benah, the sons of Rimen the Berothite, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life out of every adversity. When the one who told me, see Saul is dead, thought he was bringing good news, I seized him and killed him at Ziklag. This was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more then, when wicked men have killed a righteous man on his bed in his own house? And now shall I not require his blood at your hand and destroy you from the earth? So David commanded the young men, and they killed them. They cut off their hands and feet and hung their bodies beside the pool at Hebron. But the head of Ishbal they took and buried in the tomb of Abner at Hebron. Second Samuel chapter 5 Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people, Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who said to David, You will not come in here. Even the blind and the lame will turn you back, thinking, David cannot come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, which is now the city of David. David had said on that day, Whoever would strike down the Jebusites, let him get up the water shaft to attack the lame and the blind, those whom David hates. Therefore it is said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from Milo inward. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David, along with cedar trees and carpenters and masons who built David a house. David then perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people, Israel. In Jerusalem, after he came from Hebron, 
David took more concubines and wives, and more sons and daughters were born to David. These are the names of those who were born to him in Jerusalem. Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibar, Elishua, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphetelet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up in search of David. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? The Lord said to David, Go up for I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. So David came to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. He said, The Lord has burst forth against my enemies before me like a bursting flood. Therefore that place is called Baal Perazim. The Philistines abandoned their idols there, and David and his men carried them away. Once again the Philistines came up, and they were spread out in the valley of Rephaim. When David inquired of the Lord, he said, You shall not go up. Go around to their rear and come upon them opposite the balsam trees. When you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then be on the alert. For then the Lord has gone out before you to strike down the army of the Philistines. David did just as the Lord had commanded him, and he struck down the Philistines from Geba all the way to Giza. 2 Samuel chapter 6 David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baalai Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Iho, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Iho went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah reached out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him there because he reached out his hand to the ark. And he died there beside the ark of God. David was angry because the Lord had burst forth with an outburst upon Uzzah. So that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how can the ark of the Lord come into my care? So David was unwilling to take the ark of the Lord into his care in the city of David. Instead, David took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. It was told King David, The Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom, to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city, Michael, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. 
And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. David returned to bless his house. But Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honours himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants, maids, as any vulgar fellow might shamelessly uncover himself. David said to Michael, It was before the Lord who chose me in place of your father and all his household to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, that I have danced before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in my own eyes. But by the maids of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in honour. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. Second Samuel, chapter 7. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. May this be instruction for the people, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. Because of your promise and according to your own heart, you have wrought all this greatness so that your servant may know it. Therefore you are great, O Lord God. For there is no one like you, and there is no God besides you. 
according to all that we have heard with our ears. Who is like your people Israel? Is there another nation on earth whose God went to redeem it as a people and to make a name for himself, doing great and awesome things for them by driving out before his people nations and their gods? And you establish your people Israel for yourself to be your people forever. And you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, as for the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, confirm it forever. Do as you have promised. Thus your name will be magnified forever in the saying, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel, and the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now therefore may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. Take care. God bless. I'll see you next time.